Good day students, this is the fourth and last recording of module 5, Chemical Changes of Fats and Oils. Like I've mentioned before, whatever content that I'm discussing in this video, it's a summary. There's a textbook chapter that is actually titled Changes in Oil During Deep Fat Frying on Blackboard. You need to read or consult the textbook for in-depth understanding, since this work is just a summary. Okay, so we already know that deep fat frying is one of those processes that are applied in the food industry a lot, especially in our fast food outlets whereby almost 80% of the products are fried. I mean, starting from potato chips to different types of fish to your chicken to your fat cook to your donuts, all those products are then fried. And what we need to understand is to see what chemical reactions are actually taking place in those oil especially at those high temperatures do those changes still affect the quality of the product um do they affect the nutritional quality or does it become toxic to human being so then now by going through it then that's when you're going to understand that you can select certain types of lipids for frying because you will be preventing such and such a chemical reaction so uh, in deep fat frying high temperatures are applied and those temperatures the average between 150 and 180 but in other instances they go up, up, up above 200 degrees celsius so today we make an example of when potatoes are actually fried to make potato chips or if you want to call them french fries you can do that so the potato itself the composition of the product that's being fried also affects the quality of the oil so potato contains 75 percent water 17 percent carbohydrates and two percent proteins those are the highest um, composition and then others in smaller quantities so when we are frying the oil is heated at those high temperatures and as you know you cannot fry in a pot or anywhere in a closed system it has to be open so already the fact that it's high temperatures and you are frying whilst it's open it means that you are already um, subjecting the processing conditions to oxygen okay so what happens is when the oil is at those high temperatures when the product is inserted into the hot oil what actually happens is that 60% um, of the water in the product as it flashes in the oil as you know that sounds it makes as it enters the oil what happens is that 60 percent of that water is let out as steam as the oil start bubbling and by bubbling of the oil it means that aeration takes place so oxygen is then even bombarded even faster in there because it, it, it actually creates waves to actually incorporate the oxygen in there so if the 60% of the water is let out in steam, it means that 15% of the water will be left inside the oil itself. Okay. And then the oil, what makes up the oil? We already know that the oil is made up of triglycerides. Okay. And then this will definitely be refined oil. So all the free fatty acids would have been removed in the refining process. Okay. So then what happens is that at those high temperatures, we're talking 150 to 180 and in the presence of water. So it means that um, hydrolysis will be the first step to take place because now you have high temperatures and then you have water. So due to that hydrolysis takes place, the glycerol molecule is cleaved and then when it's cleaved, free fatty acids are then released. When the free fatty acids are relieved, then it means that you are increasing the acid value of the oil. Okay, so when the free fatty acids are cleaved, they can either be partial hydrolysis or it can also be complete depending on how long that oil is being heated at those high temperatures under those conditions. So as we had already mentioned that when the free fatty acids are actually produced or, or, or in the oil, we had mentioned that they contain both a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic tail. So when that free fatty acid is then released, it moves up to 
the surface of the oil and that also accelerates lipid oxidation because then it accelerates the incorporation of oxygen in kind of open ways we had mentioned that earlier so free fatty acids are formed and those free fatty acids then accelerate lipid oxidation also at those high temperatures we had mentioned that oxygen becomes incorporated so at high temperatures also on the fatty acid abstraction of your hydrogen takes place and if the abstraction of hydrogen takes place it means oxidation can take place the oxygen that was let in because of the bubbling effect and the current that was introduced in the oil as the the boiling and the steam water came out what happens that oxygen then reacts with what with the radically formed peroxyl radical and then it forms lipid oxidation which goes via peroxide formation and at high temperatures those peroxides are going to break down further and then form your aldehydes your acid your ketones and your hydrocarbons and as we already mentioned that this frying still continues therefore those conditions are still accelerating further reactions in there so you have your free fatty acids in there you have your aldehydes you have your acids your ketones and hydrocarbons and when those react together due to polymerization in high temperatures they form those resins those hard and the oil becomes gummy so we had mentioned that the the potatoes contain two percent protein and then one of the products that are formed are aldehydes aldehydes obviously have a carbonyl compound so having a carbonyl compound it means that your aldehydes a free anomeric group can then react with your protein or with the amino acids of protein to form the Mailer reaction so that is why then the frying oil becomes darker and darker due to browning reactions that are actually taking place in there so you have your hydrolysis you have your oxidation which then brings about aldehydes ketones with that which then polymerizes because they are reacting fusing together because remember the oil is heated up at high temperatures and then cooled down and heated because there's repeated use therefore polymerization takes place and then that is when the oil starts changing the texture it becomes more viscous okay and then from there you are actually getting all the 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 off flavors and off odors like this hydrolytic rancidity taking place this oxidative rancidity the oil is gummy and and it's dark so what happens is that when you are also frying the oil remember the oil makes the product crispy so it means all this oxidation products are then also adhering on the product because i mean the oil becomes absorbed in there that's what makes your product nice and flaky and and crispy so it means that by repeatedly using the oil that contains all of this oxidation products it means that not only are you degrading the oil but you are also exposing the potato chips that has to be eaten we had mentioned that when it comes to lipid oxidation it affects your essential fatty acids degrades those it degrades your fat um, dissolving vitamins and stuff like that and produce carcinogenic products so that is why in the in the industry where a lot of deep fat frying takes place they monitor the oil they have chats different chats of different colors that will then tell them as to when do you actually change the the oil and also to minimize oxidation all the oils that are used for frying already contains an antioxidant but i mean an antioxidant can only function up to a certain point if oxidation is being accelerated it means that um, the antioxidant can be degraded but it does function so those color charts will then tell them when to change the oil and also um, the type of material oil that is used in the food industry they also stay away from your highly unsaturated fatty acids like if you can go to uh, a fast food outlet you know sometimes you will see them pouring the oil 
when they pour the oil usually that oil is semi liquid it's not uh, a very liquid it's semi solid kind of so they blend oils of different iodine values so that they don't concentrate just on the highly unsaturated fatty acid which is likely to oxidize faster but they they incorporate other oils of low saturation so that they can come up with um, a, a, a better fat that is better suited to to function at those high temperatures thank you